my soul is an elusive, hunted animal. I'm always looking for it. In some dimly lit room, in some sleepless night, in your eyes. My soul is a bastard. He's got dirty hands and he lives in the dark. Sometimes I see him running by. He stops briefly in the corner of my eye and moves on down the path. He runs into the forest, picking up sticks, and he builds himself a fire. He feeds the flames until it's a hot, hot furnace, and then he donates himself to the inferno. He screams, I smile. He burns, I live. And it just goes on and on and on. And the wheels just keep <laughs> number uh <laughs> what week is this <laughs> hitchhiking for the last time says, put this on, son, you're going to need this while I'm taking you. Because while I'm taking you, we got a cross just your size, and we've been keeping it warm for your form. slamming against its walls, blood hurtling down my veins, waiting on that pendulum blade to cut its path across my flesh. Every day it swings a little closer, and sometimes I can feel the wings passing by. Number three. the monsters. Look out, mother. Here come the monsters. Walking into your town. Walking down your street. Walking to your house. Gonna walk right through your door. Gonna rape you and kill your kids. Gonna rape you and kill your kids. Gonna rape you, bitch, and kill your kids. And barbecue them right on the front lawn. Only kidding. <laughs> That smiles. I 
I think that death is the handsomest, baddest, dice-rolling bastard that ever walked through this stinking town. And I think that death is the prettiest-looking, hot-headed, brassy bitch that ever looked my way. I think that death smiles. I think that death talks. I think that death says to some, set yourself on down. Have yourself one last gasp for the road. I think that death says to others, Next! But to some, I think death says, uh, Chin up, shoulders back, feet together, all right! Now, let's let the game begin, let's have some fun! Yeah, all right then, all right then. Now, son, I want you to walk on those painted footsteps that I painted for you. Mm-hmm, good, that's my boy. Go get him. See you soon. <laughs> this is a letter that never got sent. That's why I still have it. It's uh, to my friend Lydia Lunch. Dear Lydia, Thanks for not writing, as it makes this letter a hell of a lot easier to write without you butting in. Hey, Lydia, this girl told me that I get what I deserve. Can you imagine that? Well, I'll tell you. Anyone who has the nerve to say that gets what they deserve. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. And now that I've told you everything, I think I'll tell you nothing at all for a change. I tell you, I could use a change. Any kind of a change. A change of clothes. Spare change. So please, give till it hurts. Because if it doesn't hurt, then it's not worth the paper it's printed on. And if it gets that bad... Please send it to P.O. Box 1, Lawndale, California. And I'll spend some time spending it. And when I'm done, I'll send it back to you and you can have a try. And we'll see who comes out smelling like a pig in a rose's eye. Love, you say? Yeah. I did that stuff once and threw up all over the carpet. Woke up with my heart in my hand and my head in Philadelphia. That was a real mess. And then it got worse. <sighs> Finally, I liquidated all property and moved to California to become a dying legend. Yours until something better comes along. Henry. P.S. Lydia, the monkey on your back just jumped on mine, so call him home, call him mud, call him anything you want, but don't call him late for dinner as his name is Lawrence. This is uh, one of my multi-attacks on fatherhood, motherhood, unity, family way. It's, it's, it's all right. It's everything I hate. <laughs> family man. Family man. Family man. Family man. With your glances my way, taking no chances on the new day, family man. Family man with your life all planned, your little sand castles built, and you just smile through your guilt. Here I come. Here I come, family man. I come to infect. I come to rape your woman. I come to lead your children into the street, family man. Family man with your Christmas lights already up. You're such a fucking man when you're putting up your Christmas lights. First on the block! Family man. Family man. I want to crucify you on your front door with nails from your well stocked garage. Family man. Family man. Saint dad. Father on fire. I've come to incinerate you. I've come home. I'm not from here. I'm from Washington, D.C. 3,000 miles away from here. And uh, I got sent to a whole series of different schools when I was growing up. I got sent to a public school where I got beat up a lot, and then I got sent to another school where you call your teachers by their first name, <laughs> and get to do what you want, and I stabbed this kid in fifth grade, and then I got sent to the bullet school, which is kind of the end of the line. If you're a fuck up or whatever, they, they put you here, and this is where I went to. And uh, that really had a big uh, effect on me and how I am. In that time.
time, I would see my father a lot on the weekends. They, my mother and my father, got divorced when I was one years old in 1962, I think. And uh, so through the marriage agreement or the divorce court or whatever it was, I would go visit them on the weekends. And uh, we would get together. And it was always the same thing. It was Saturday morning, out to McDonald's. <laughs> then we would drive along the Potomac River and go way out to the country to Manassas and the place where they fought for all the wars and stuff. And then we would drive down these country roads and we would go straight out the window here. And I'd be sitting right over here and we didn't even look at it. We were just going to the <laughs> Oh, my father. <laughs> my father smoked cigars like a man should. My father was a hero to me. My father was a soldier once. He had a car and a house and a son. My father would take me out on weekends, and boy, did we have some fun. My father told me that I was lucky. My father said that I had better not turn out to be a faggot, thief, or junkie. And he said, son, those nigger boys will just take your money. Well, daddy, you fucked mommy and here I am. You fucked mommy and here I am. You fucked mommy and here I am. Read, I can find it. Ah. I'd like to read from you uh, some journal extracts from a trip to Europe. Maybe I can try and get into the microphone. No. to read to you was uh, <coughs> Thursday night, which was Saturday, January 29th, not uh, Sunday, January 29th. And uh, this is from a tour of the Black Flag with the Minutemen on to Europe and all across America. We had a really good time. Saturday, January 29th, 1983. My father said, Cool. Cool people. Good 
shit like, well, now that you know, just move on. Sure. Easier said than done. That lady in the nausea maker asked me what makes me so angry. I just don't think she would have understood how I feel inside. I walked through this world with a deep and everlasting sorrow in my heart. I live my life.
hours, we need to have the overnight ferry to Amsterdam. Tomorrow night, we stay in a real hotel. That's where a lot of my mind went. Later. Now I'm sitting on the boat. This here boat is fucking huge. There's a pool, sauna, gym, restroom, disco, etc. Very stylish. I'm sitting far away from the others because I get sick of hearing. Blowjobs! Nick Heist Groupies! <laughs> I don't understand that bullshit and want no part of it. On the way to a car, I saw a man and a woman with four bright blonde dogs all very pretty. I've never seen a family like that ever. Lots of English people and Dutch on this boat. I just thought how weird it is. One night being in a grimy old club and the next night being in a place that looks like some bony hotel lot. We should be landing in Amsterdam in eight hours or so. I'm tired, but there's no way to sleep here. I was just thinking that with my luck, I'll probably lose this. Excuse me, lose this joke. So, hey you, if you're reading this and you find it, please send it back to me. <laughs> Flash! Piercing screams from one deck up, followed by loud, rotty American rock stars yelling to stay up here because there's a party up here, dude. Four young ladies are jumping down the stairs, eating on my poor gas and get food. The boat has not even left the dock yet. So, back to the other thing. If you do find this, please mail it to Henry Rollins, Black Flag, P.O. Box 1, Lawndale, California, 90260, USA. Thank you. existence and everyone else's two trees, both bear fruit. One will fill you, the other will kill you. I see my name carved in the ruins. I see my number carved in the ruins. I think my number is up. I can finally see myself, my reflection in sand, my reflection in heat, my reflection in light. I raise my hands to the sky. It is time to die. It's always time. There's always time to die. Didn't it always seem like time? Didn't it always seem like the right time? Didn't it? The desert heat makes the blood boil. My eyes are two smashed out windows. Through my broken gaze, I see. <coughs> I stare at my hands and I wonder what is happening here. It's so cold when the wind comes whistling through my house. My mind is the attic, pushed aside piles of junk, dark. Cluttered, locked up. I can't get out. It's lonely. I'm all alone in my house. My heart is the basement. I don't. 
don't dare go down those stairs. The door's been closed for so long now. I think there's something down there. It's all quiet. It's all quiet. No one comes up on this. My ghetto, 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 my ghetto gets getting. You see that mangy black dog looking at you through one good eye? You know that beast from my ghetto because he's hungry and low running. My ghetto gets getting and it pulls you in. You walk into my ghetto, I hand you a sack of sad, bad trash, slap you on the back and say, Howdy! Glad you could come on in. My ghetto gets it right. And sunshine ignores this heap of bad timing. My ghetto gets horny and it sucks you in. You see those hot rod cars slither by? You know those junk heaps are from my ghetto because they're low riding. My ghetto gets lonely and it drags you in. Dig my trash, dig my trash. Hear my cry of love over the buzz of 1,000 flies. Stay with me, stay with me tonight because all of this can be yours. For a moment or forever. Because I got nothing and I'll give it all to you. <laughs> place. You know it's the real thing when uh, the real thing makes you a little bit cold and damp. The real thing makes you a little bit moist. Old Spadefoot just has his way. And I'll go into Spade first. But Spadefoot's a walking man. He's all made of leather and shit. And he's got some scars. He's got one here. He's got one there. He's got one there. He's got one there. And uh, been fucked with for a long time, so he's walking. Old Spadefoot just has his way. No one ever lie in the book because he wrote that book. Spadefoot, walking down the last street out to the desert, leaving behind that odd, fetid footprint. <laughs> step by step into the desert, the filthy desert sand sucks Spadefoot's body in. The stink of the ruins fills Spadefoot's leather lungs. The smell of smoke. The crunch of blanched crust underneath Spade feet. And Spadefoot doesn't even try to wipe that grin off his face. The heat. The dead air. The smell of home cooking. This must be the place. Animal sounds in the temple, a certain defilement. Animal sounds in the temple, and Spadefoot says, This is the place where I pulled that angel down, pinned her lovely wings to the ground, and made her feel so dirty. Animal sounds in the temple, a certain defilement. Animal sounds in the temple, smoke rising from the ground, a new strain from the ruins. Something crawls out from underneath that smoldering tomb. A new beast rises from the ashes. Steam still rising from the gutted corpse of love. Spadefoot curses the remains and looks at the stains on his hands. Love's blood spilling. 
steam still rising, love's blood spilling all over the place, and now spade foot's waiting, waiting on the next time. Itchy fingers getting hungry, wait to wrap themselves around a trigger and pull and pull and make love's blood spill all over again.
No, don't do that. Speaking of getting stuff thrown at you, I want to tell you just, just one second while I got like five minutes left about the guy kind of got this, this whole thing going, Harvey Kubernetes. And Harvey really speaks for LA. He's got two double albums out in the stores right now. He's moving that product. And he's got Voice of the Angels out in English as a second language. And he's got a new double album coming out very, very soon. Rod, he was on Rodden's last night at KROQ, playing spoken word, playing stuff, answering phone calls. And he got nothing but abuse from a bunch of people who see the world like this. And he went out to his car to drive home after this piece of shit interview was done, and he got stuff thrown at him. There were people in the parking lot waiting on his ass, and they dumped him with uh, cans and bottles, and he said the same thing which I basically said. Beer cans are okay. If they're empty, they just kind of sail, and you can go for pay leg. <laughs> but the bottles, no, no, no bottles. So, Harvey, you do understand that it is a war out there, wherever you are, and we're all like little soldiers, and, uh, Guns and guitars for weapons and all that cool shit, which I don't believe in anyhow. And I just thought I'd say it because I insist on saying it. I want to say something to myself. <laughs> There's another thing I was thinking about today. I was sitting outside this club, and uh, the sun was going down at about like maybe 4.30, and I was just waiting to get in here and do my sound check. It lasted about 30, 35 seconds. I just kind of went like, <coughs>
10 blocks from where I was, so I saw the whole scene change, and you could still walk by the house and see Linda Blair's boob on everybody, <laughs> and all that cool shit, and I remember finally going to see it, and uh, I went to go see it in a nice neighborhood, and everyone was like totally scared shitless. Like, Your mother sucks tops in hell! I'm like, oh.